Hi friends, welcome to Reclaimed to Rain. You are in for a real treat because this episode is all about how to keep going in your business when you have no motivation. Now, for me personally, I wish I would have came across an episode like this about two, three years ago because I was really struggling in the motivation department, if you know what I mean. So that being said, I actually have about five tips for you on how you can keep going in your business when you have no motivation. So all of that to say, let's dive on in. Hey queen, welcome to Reclaim Terrain. I'm your host, Hannah Brindley, daughter of the king, certified life coach, and faith-fueled business mentor. I know you are so sick of feeling like you've worked so hard in your business with little to no reward while staying in this same cycle of self-sabotaging tendencies you know are keeping you stuck. And because of that, I know you are craving to end this never-ending cycle of self-destruction and cultivate a successful Holy Spirit-led business without letting it become your idol. So if you are ready to be fueled by faith over flesh, fight your battles spiritually instead of physically, take bold action on your God-given callings, and finally create that thriving faith-fueled business, then you're in the right place. Go ahead and reheat your coffee, grab a notebook and pen, and let's dive in. So do you remember how I mentioned I wish I would have had an episode like this, you know, two, three years ago because I was really lacking some motivation? (laughs) Well, here's the thing. I was. I had a super hard time getting myself motivated to do any type of work. Even though, like, I was struggling financially, I had the hardest time actually getting myself to sit down and to work. Now, fast forward, you know, a couple of years, I started noticing it wasn't difficult for me to sit down and do work anymore. And to be quite honest with you, I couldn't figure out why that was the case. Like, what was the difference between, you know, a couple years ago versus now? Like, why was it so difficult for me to actually sit down and work versus now, right? Where it's really not that difficult to sit down for me to do the work. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some days when I am a lot less motivated than others. Like I promise you that, but it is like a night and day difference. So that being said, I really sat down and I was like, God, what was the difference? You know, what really led me to procrastinating all the time and just not wanting to do the work to actually like getting stuff done, really serving my clients well, and on fire for you. What was the difference? So that being said, I've got five tips for you that I really truly believe made all the difference, and I'm so excited to share them with you today. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive in to tip number one. Now, tip number one is a little bit of a disclaimer or a preface, but it is still a tip nonetheless. And so the first tip is that discipline will trump motivation every single time. Because the truth is, you're not always going to be motivated, okay? That is when discipline comes in, when you're not motivated. Because here's the thing, if you actually needed more motivation, you could just pop in a podcast or go to Pinterest or go to Instagram. There's literally motivation everywhere you look. If you needed more motivation, you would already be doing the thing. So I'm going to tell you right now, you probably don't need more motivation. Okay. You probably need a little bit more discipline And if it's not discipline, maybe you need something else, which I'm going to be talking about in another tip soon. But what I'm getting at here is that you're probably not lacking motivation. You are probably missing something else. And one of those things might be discipline. And I know that when you hear the word discipline, you're probably cringing or rolling your eyes right now. I get it. I was the same way. But, but hear me out. About a year ago, I was doing a scripture study on Hebrews and a verse in Hebrews really stood out to me and I want to share it with you today. 
Hebrews 12 verse 11 says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So for me personally, this verse was huge because for the longest time, I saw discipline as entrapment, as me feeling stuck because I wanted to feel free. Like that's the whole purpose of starting a business, right? Like you want to have that financial and time freedom. And I just kind of felt like, you know, discipline. Like if I think about disciplining myself, I'm like, ugh, that means I've got to like put myself in this box again. I didn't want that. And this verse changed the way I viewed discipline. And here's why. It says, later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. This verse is literally saying, discipline equals peace. And y'all, I did not have peace when I wasn't disciplined, okay? Like, I just didn't. And this also makes me think of a sermon I heard recently that said, Living a limited life for Jesus actually equals freedom. While the world tries to have freedom here and now, they actually don't have freedom, right? Because they're not living for Jesus. But when you live a limited life for Jesus, you get eternal freedom. You get true freedom. And so when you think about it in this way, discipline actually equals freedom, And I know this may not be a new concept, but this was the reframe that I personally needed to have in order to get disciplined when I was not motivated. So while this was a huge like revelation for me all by itself, there were still a couple more things that I had to figure out, which means there are a few more tips for you as well. So moving on to tip number two. Tip number two is to align your business with the mission and why you need to actually have discipline. And here's the thing. I know for me personally, for a really long time, I was pursuing my business solely for financial and time freedom. Now, don't get me wrong. Financial and time freedom are great, but It's worldly freedom. Now, for me personally, I had to essentially shift the way I viewed my business. It wasn't just a vehicle to take me to time and financial freedom. It was a vehicle to help me fulfill my purpose, which is to know Jesus and to make him known. So for me personally, I had to shift my intention for my business. And this was huge because really at the end of the day, I thought I was really motivated by money and financial freedom and success because that's all I had chased in the past. But the thing is, I wasn't really motivated by those things. What actually motivates me is Jesus. What actually motivates me is the mission that I am on for him, not for me. And that had to shift because that mindset right there helps me get up in the morning when I really don't want to. That mindset right there helps me do things that I am dreading just because I'm in my flesh and I just don't want to be doing it. But I do it because I know it is going to be the right call for the mission. You have to make it about the mission. And the mission needs to align with him because otherwise you're going to be fueled by things of this world like money or success or whatever it is you're being fueled by. But that's basically being fueled by the world or flesh. Or you can align yourself and your business with him and be fueled by him and by faith. You have to choose and you have to consciously make that decision every second of every day because the world is going to try to suck you back in. It's like a vortex. It's going to try. 
So you have to make the decision to be on fire for your mission for him. And that combined with discipline, that right there is the game changer. I'm still giving you three more tips, but that right there is really the the missing piece that I needed. I really needed this and that's what changed everything for me. But like I said, I still have three more tips and these are a little bit more tactical and I know you like tactical tips. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So tip number three is to give yourself permission to pause, to rest. And y'all, this is huge. It is so important to rest and not just physically rest, but spiritually rest, to truly rest in Jesus. And you may be wondering, okay, I get the importance of resting. I know I need to do it, but I feel like I've been procrastinating a lot because I've had no motivation and isn't that rest? Like, I feel like I've been resting a lot. I really just need to get to work. If you're feeling this way, then I want to encourage you to go to episode 13, which is all about if God is calling you to push or to pause. I think that would really benefit you a lot in this season because I have been (laughs) in your shoes and I know that it can feel like, oh my goodness, everyone's telling me to rest. I know the importance of rest, but I'm not working. I need to get stuff done. Please go listen to episode 13, but also I just want to say here that just because you're not working doesn't mean you're resting. There have been many, many times when I wasn't working, but I wasn't resting and not just physical rest, but actual like mental, emotional, spiritual rest, because I have always had this tendency that when I wasn't working, I would essentially beat myself up for not working. And what is that doing? It's essentially not resting. Even when I was resting, I couldn't stop myself from feeling guilt or shame because I was resting and I wasn't working. I felt like I was constantly procrastinating. And what does that do? It wears you out. It burns you out, right? So please just remember that just because you're not working doesn't mean you're resting. So please Give yourself permission to pause and to rest and to spend time with Jesus, okay? And if you're wondering if you need to push or to pause, please go listen to episode 13 after this one. Now, all of that to say, if you know you need to be giving yourself permission to pause, please put that into your schedule, right? Put time to rest into your calendar. Do not let this slide. We need rest. We need rest. And I promise you, it is one of the most productive things you can be doing. And fun little fact, I was actually having a conversation with some gals I'm super close to, and the topic came up about discipline, right? Remember how I was saying that discipline frees you? That conversation came up and how a limited life brings you freedom with Jesus. But with that... It is also important that we are disciplined with our rest. We need to be disciplined with our rest. It is so important. We need it as humans because guess what? We are not God. And even God rested. (laughs) Okay? Like, he rested. So please, pause this episode right now and put rest into your calendar. Please, please please, you will thank me later. I promise. (laughs) Because not only will you have so much more motivation to actually be disciplined in your work, but you're going to be a lot more creative. You're going to get things done much faster and more efficiently and effectively because you rested. It's really a beautiful thing. Now, moving on to the fourth tip, which is another tactical one. You've got to know what you're focusing on when you actually start working. A lot of the time, I think people don't have motivation because 
they're just doing random things all the time. It's like they have this like end goal or vision in mind to make like a full-time income online or, you know, to make 5K months and they're just doing all the things to try and make it happen without actually having a plan or process to follow to actually make it happen. Now, an example of this would actually be just posting content to post content so they can stay quote unquote consistent. Now, don't get me wrong, consistent is so important, but you don't need to just post to post. If that worked on its own, everybody would be posting something every day because it made them money. But that's not really how it works, is it? There's more to it than that. There's a strategy involved when it comes to successful sales. Yes, consistency is important, but it's not just about posting every single day and going viral. It's not about that. If you really want to see fruits of your labor, there has to be a purpose as to why you're doing what you're doing. Stop doing busy work all the time and getting distracted by shiny objects and actually focus on what's actually going to work. Get yourself a daily sales system, something that you know to do every single day that is going to work. And yes, that might include making content, that might include making posts, but stop just posting to post. Like it's probably burning you out and it's also probably discouraging you because things aren't happening. And I don't want that for you. So that being said, please, when you have a work block, when you're going into work, please know what you were going to be working on during that work block. It will make things so much better. And then finally, for tip number five, find a community of other Christian female entrepreneurs and allow Holy Spirit to work through them and pour into you and vice versa. Because we are meant to be in community. And I also know a lot of the time, Christians who aren't entrepreneurs don't really get it. Just like entrepreneurs who aren't Christians also don't really get it. And that's okay. We are to still be around them and be in community with them. We are to still love them and be friends with them and be family with them, right? But at the same time, find a community of women who really do get it, who do know the struggles that you're facing because they might be going through the same thing or they might be a step ahead of you or they may be able to give you advice or help or pray for you when other people just won't really understand. And that's okay. That's part of being a Christian entrepreneur. So please, please, please find yourself a community of other Christian female entrepreneurs and allow Holy Spirit to work through them and pour into you. As an example, I know the community inside of Faith Fueled Coach Academy is like no other community out there. The women inside this community are just incredible and they root each other on and they pray with each other and they support each other and it is so beautiful to witness and to see because I just know Holy Spirit is working inside of this community. If you're not sure what Faith Field Coach Academy is, it is my signature program. It is to help female entrepreneurs start and scale a Holy Spirit-led coaching business. And I highly, highly, highly recommend getting on the wait list because we will be launching it again very, very soon. You can get on the wait list by going to www.hannahbrinley.com slash F-C-A. And it is also linked in the show notes for you. But if FCA isn't up your alley, please join us inside of the Reclaim to Rain Facebook community, which is also linked in the show notes for you. So as a recap, the five tips are discipline will trump motivation every time, align your business with the mission and why you're focusing on it, give yourself permission to pause, know what you're focusing on during your work blocks, and find a community of other Christian female entrepreneurs. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey queen, don't head out just yet. 
If this podcast has blessed you in some way, it would mean the absolute world to me if you left a written review of the show over on Apple Podcasts. It truly lights a fire in me knowing how God has impacted you through this platform. And since I absolutely adore connecting with you, please, please, please screenshot this episode or your review and post it on your stories on Instagram and tag me at Hannah Brindley. I can't wait to see you over there. So much love to you.